The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all of the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you, then, will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Blessed Trinity, one holy and living God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. There is an Ash Wednesday cartoon that has been circulating over the years. It pictures a clergy person making the sign sign of the cross out of ashes on a smiling teenage or or tweenage girl's forehead, saying the usual words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And under those words, you see the girl's thought bubble and understand why she is smiling. The bubble reads, pixie dust. And I'm not sure why this cartoon is circulating amongst the clergy in particular. Is it supposed to be a funny commentary or perhaps a sad one where we are offering cheap grace? I'm leaning actually toward the latter since I am quite guilty of sprinkling the cross with pixie dust myself. And I've also seen this very cartoon coupled with a quote from the movie Fight Club. I know, we're not supposed to talk about that. (laughs) First rule. (laughs) Anyway, here's the quote. You are not special. You are not a beautiful and unique snowflake. You are the same decaying organic matter as everything else. We're all part of the same compost heap. We're all singing, all dancing, crap of the world. And, well... That really does get to the hardcore truth of Ash Wednesday, doesn't it? I mean, the gospel reading for Ash Wednesday every year is about how showing off is hypocritical because we are not really all that holy. We are dust. The thing is, though, I think we all know that about ourselves. We live in a shame-based society, after all. And the church, over the last 2,000 years, has been especially good at reinforcing the message that we are not good enough. It's like at every baptism, we send out the message, welcome to the compost heap, little one, and don't you ever forget that you're on the bottom of it. Some folks battle the demon in that message their entire 
lives. Like Jesus, they go right from baptism to the desert. That's actually the image we have at the font right now. Jesus' time in the wilderness is very interesting. First of all, the devil shows up, which, is, which at the time was not, the thought, was not thought of as an outside personification of evil, but rather an internal one. The devil is not a supernatural being here, but a manifestation of the human condition the potentially sinful parts of ourselves that we wrestle with on a daily basis. And Jesus wrestled too. He was fully human after all, and I love that about our God. I love that what's going on in this text. Here is Jesus who just moments before was affirmed as God's son and beloved in his baptism by John and still he is listening to the negative voice inside himself that says, you're not special. You are not a unique snowflake. You are not all that. If you were truly all of that, if you are really the son of God, you would be more spectacular. Do you understand what's happening here? Jesus is fighting with his human nature about his human nature. If you were really the son of God, his devil challenges, you would be able to feed everyone, rule the world with your crazy kingdom of God nonsense, and, and never get hurt. And Jesus struggled with that as we all do from time to time. I mean, who doesn't want those things? Those are good goals. Feeding people, no one hungry, kingdom of God living, no pain, no suffering. But the ends do not justify the means. Jesus was not willing to sacrifice his humanity to prove himself. He didn't have to, he knew who he was. And he knew there was a greater good at stake. Ours were the greater good. God came to show us that by becoming one of us. And what if the only difference between us and Jesus is that at his baptism, he actually believed his own belovedness. Unfortunately, our time in the wilderness battling our personal devils is not limited to 40 days. It's a lifelong experience for most of us. So what if we use the time of Lent to remember that we don't have anything to prove to our devils? We know who we are. St. Paul's, we know who we are, right? We are beloved children of God. And sure, we may all be part of the same compost heap, but it is one in which our God willingly joined us. And thanks be to God for that pixie dust.